Be'ezras Hashem Yisbarach Yom Chamishi Leparsh Hanigash Yeshiva Teferis Avigdur Shnas Tovshin Ein Zayin Today I want to speak about a subject that is the opposite of yesterday's subject. Yesterday we spoke about how detestable and bad it is to be a hypocrite. And that a person, the Kiddush we said yesterday, was that someone who does one thing, he's friendly with Rishayim, but he talks against tzaddikim, which is hypocrisy. That fellow, not only is he a hypocrite, but he's going to be judged much more than his oinish will be very great and magnified, doubled for his hypocrisy. But today the subject is going to be kosher hypocrisy. And when are you supposed to be a hypocrite? You know, this doesn't apply to you so much because you are always a kosher hypocrite. <laughs> Let me explain this to you, but it's relevant to you also in different areas. There is a certain place where people think they decide to become Anche Emes. And they decide that they don't want to be hypocrites. So let's say, for example, a guy's wife asks him, do you like me? And the guy gets bothered by the question and he says, no. And then she says, you don't like me? You don't love me? He says, no. Right now, I hate you. So he asks the fellow, what are you doing? The guy says, I'm being honest. I'm being honest? She asked me a question, what am I supposed to say? I've experienced this many times. I tell people, I don't like to be a hypocrite, he said. I want to go in the ways of Hashem. Now, Hashem is Ish Emes, Dvorcha Emes. That's Hashem's Chaisim, is Emes. But where do we find in Hashem this type of hypocrisy? You know where? When Sarah says to Avram, Sarah says to Hashem, how are we going to have kids? My husband is so old. He's too old to have kids. So when Hashem repeats over what she said, know what Hashem says? When he tells Avram what she said, he doesn't say to Avram that your wife said about you that you're old. She said that she's old. And this is, this is, that's not magnificent. This is, this is neurotic. Avram is talking Sadik Nifla She'en Kamoisai, a hundred years old. The man is such a Tzadik, he sold a mile from anything. You can't believe it. He never saw his wife for so many years of his life, in decades. He was shocked that she's an attractive person. You think he cared about if she he thinks she thinks she was old or not, he could kill us. And here's Hashem, the Spitz Emmas, the epitome of Emmas. And what does Hashem say? This is what your wife said. No know what we would say? That's hypocrite. That's hypocrisy. But you know what the answer is? It is. But it's the kind of hypocrite Hashem wants you to be. And that's why Hashem demonstrates this by his behavior. 
Now, you'll see a lot of shvache guys are very special anshe emes in the areas where they're supposed to be anshe sheke. And you have to study this because it's very important. As a fellow goes over, now if you have a taina on somebody, it's one thing. But like the Chazanish writes that a woman could have friends, she could have family, she could have children, but there's nobody that she wants to get acknowledgement more than from her husband. Her husband. He wants, she wants to find chain in his eyes. So it's very common that a wife asks her husband, do you think I'm getting fat? Do you think I'm getting old? Right? You think you're 60 years old. You get, you get older than you were when I married you. You were 20. Know what the answer is? In my eyes, you're still like 20. As Ada once told me, that even if you're upset at your wife, and you want to say, no person feels in love with his wife all the time. No such is. He said, if you give most people a choice, after a couple of years of marriage, to choose a wife of their choice. He said very few people would choose their wife. I remember when I heard the one says, is that really true? <laughs> I said, I'm very shocked. Do you hear that? That's all it is. So what? It's still the wife you got, it's still the best wife you. And your machuyev lehisnahe, don't anybody fool themselves. That they're not going to think like that. But what happens is, here's an ish emes, ad, zhulik, a low life, a degenerate, tells his wife, you know what, I don't love you anymore. His wife says, what? That's like the worst thing to tell a wife. You know what I mean? So what do you want to do about it? I don't know. If I could, I would get divorced. He says that word. Guys are right, seach. Even if the guy is thinking that, he should never say that. He should say, I love you, even if he doesn't mean it. And he's not a hypocrite. That's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants him to do. And so to a wife, to a husband. So as a wife says to a husband, you know, you look, you look like my father. You think, well, it's a nice joke. Nice joke. But, no. You have to be careful. Now, there's another thing that's very common, people. Here's a guy who buys something. Guy purchases a car, even a second-hand car. Or I've had people ask me over the years, tell me the truth, what do you think of my wife? You know what I always tell them? She's a gem. She's a gem. I don't say what kind of gem. <laughs> I don't say if it's a perfect gem. I don't say if it's a diamond gem. Might be a cheap stone, it's also a cheap stone. But you never tell a guy such a thing are words that will come back now, for years, 50 years later, the guy's gonna remember that, and you broke up this guy's marriage. You came between this guy's shalom bites. You know why? Because you were honest. Who wish you to be honest? Now, even if a guy comes to you and he tells you that his wife is what you're gonna call it, your chiv is to say to him, it's not true. You're exaggerating. Now, it's a halacha. If a person buys something, you're supposed to be mishabeach mekchay lefanov. Does a person marry his wife? The Mar says in Subas, don't you see? What are you seeing? This, this, this mere kala no the chasuda. So the Gemara says, how can you see kala? Not everybody's kala no chasuda. That's it. It's a very important principle. So everybody says, I'm not going to be here because my friend, I want to be honest with the guy, tell him he got a dog. What do you, what do you, what do you accomplish by that? Nothing. Nothing. 
This is called hypocrisy that a person has to. Now, the only place you should use your honesty is on your own self. Your own morality, you should be honest with yourself and say, maybe you're a dog. Say, maybe you're not such a tzaddik. Maybe you're not such a good person. Now I'll tell you another place, very common, today's world especially, I usually get at least a few calls a week about this question. Some people call, they don't want to tell me their name. Some people ask me if it's okay if they give the first name. Some people call from private number. Some people forget to call from private number. They say, I'm not going to give you my name. <laughs> say, it's fine. One guy got, one guy got, what's your call to me, little testy. So I said, listen, I pay Yosef. <laughs> he said, oh my God. You can read my name over the phone? I said, I can see into your wallet. Should I tell you your last name? <laughs> but what's their line? This is the line. The line is, and the reason why they, they, they want to be anonymous is because they feel embarrassed. They say, I've been learning in Kail, I'm learning in Yeshiva, and I really don't like to learn. As a matter of fact, you know, I heard all my life from Yeshivas, Taira, Taira, Taira. I heard from Yeshivas that if I go to work, I'm going to be a Shagit, I'm going to come a Shagit. I want to know what you think about such a thing. I said, I want you to know, and, and I'll tell you what the, the thing is. In this world, everybody says, be honest with yourself. Be honest. Express your feelings. So if you don't like to learn, you know, what happens is, when, what, so what's wrong if a person says it? I'll tell you what happens. In his mind, it becomes as follows. If I say I don't like something, let's say I don't like this drink. I don't drink it. I don't have to drink it. If I don't like this dish of chicken, I don't have to eat it. If I don't like something, I don't do it. So the person in his mind thinks that he now has an absolute heter to express that he doesn't like it. Saying that is a chilil Hashem hagodel v'hanoy. Let's say a guy would say to his mother, Ma, I'm going to tell it to you straight. I really don't like you. I hate you. When I think of you, I get no warm, fuzzy feelings. I feel, Baruch Hashem, I'm out of the house. I feel bad that I have to call you once a week. No. You think that honesty is good? No. Why, why, why is honesty? Why is that wrong honesty? Tell you why. Because a person is mechuyiv to be mechabed his mother and his father. And you have to be mechabed, the mother and the father that Hashem gave you. Regardless of what they do and how they treat you, even if your father smacks you around. Not long ago somebody called me up very upset. At his parents. And they treated one of the siblings, they thought in a terrible way. So they were up in arms. What did I say to them, Shimon? And the guy told me that. What do you think I said to him? No. I said, for a child of a parent to give himself the license to critique his parents is an Avera Gedoyla Admoi. You have no right to critique your parents. That was not true. Because you have a din of, you have a chi of kibbut of a. Let's say I don't like the smell of a safer tire. So can I push it off the beam on the floor? I don't like the safer tire smells. No, of course not. It's the safer tire. But it bothers me. It gets on my nerve. It makes me nervous. It makes me unhappy. So what? People don't realize that they have chiyuvim. Even in the Gaish world, that. Some, some guys have brains and understand this. But as Torah Jews, we're subjugated to a Torah. That's what a person has to know. So you can't 
say to Hashem, I don't like Hashem. Saying I don't like Hashem's Torah, or Hashem's Torah gives me headaches, or Hashem's Torah makes me nervous. It is Eino Chochilu Hashem God Mizoyz. So what does a person, what's the answer a person comes to tell you, I don't like my mother, I don't like my father? You know what the answer is? Your mother's a human being. She may have faults, but your chiv in the Torah is to respect her. That's it. You want to know what's normal? The Torah writes, it's normal that a child loves a mother. If you don't, you got to fix that up. You have to learn how to love a mother. Just like you have to learn how to how to, how to parent. So therefore, a person, it makes no difference whatsoever how you feel. An honesty that's not halachically sanctioned has to be held inside, subjugated, and dealt with. But you don't say it. So when the person calls me up and tells me, I'm going to be very honest with you, Tyra doesn't work for me. Tyra doesn't do anything for me. So what? We have a chiv to learn Tyra. If you're rich, if you're poor, if you're young, if you're old, if you're sick, if you're on the goyses, the day you die, you have to, if you know today's the last day, you have a chiv to learn Tyra. So saying I don't like it is being a precast oil. A person can't be pyrocoil. He has to accept that he has responsibilities in his life and he has to do those responsibilities. You can't do something because it makes you feel good and you can't, if it's wrong, and you can't reject a tzivuy of Hashem because you don't like the tzivuy of Hashem. Now, is there a problem with a person working? No. I told the guy, there's nothing wrong with a person going to work. But you can't go to work because you're rejecting Hashem. If you're leaving Torah because it's a rejection of Hashem, that's a chil Hashem. Somebody said, I don't like my mother, so I don't want to get into a fight with her, so I'm never going to call her again. I'm moving to another country, I'm not going to call her again. I won't be able to keep her away. That's not keep her away. That's called your fry image. Your pyric oil, malchus shemay. When you say Shema Yisrael, Hashem lekeno, Hashem echad. So a person says to me, "So what am I supposed to do?" <laughs> I said, "Okay, I'm going to tell you." Now. What you have to do is understand that everything that Hashem tells me to do, not only am I able to do, I'm able to enjoy doing it. A person is capable of enjoying doing what Hashem wants him to do. He may not be pre be preconditioned. He may have a, an aversion to doing it because he got involved in riches, because of certain personality traits that he has. He's lazy, he's this, he's that. But that doesn't exempt him from the chiv. Saying, I don't like it, or I don't want to do it, in his mind, he thinks that exempts him from the chiv. It's exactly what a friar person who says is, I don't want to be observant. I remember experiencing this once in Eretz Yisrael. I went to Afghan on Shabbos. They just opened the highway next to Ezra Steyer. And it was closed, and there was also a car, one car was driving on it. So some Yerushalmi guy got, starts waving at this, and then Yerushalmi guy lays down in the street. And the guy drove his car up to the guy, and the front of his car was over the guy. He stopped by his wheels. He thought the guy would jump, the guy didn't jump. And he comes out of the car, and he starts to shout. And this guy, the guy on the floor, under the car, is saying, Shabbos! Shabbos, not screaming, what are you saying? Shabbos. And the guy opened his mouth, I talk English. He said, I don't observe Shabbos. I need Lord Shabbat Shabbat. I said, so I suppose I put my mouth and I heard it was an English accent. 
I said, that's his point. You have to keep Shabbos. He said, what? I don't want to keep Shabbos. I said, you don't have a choice. Are you Jewish? He says, yes. I said, where are you from? He said, England. I said, Jews from England also have to keep Shabbos. Shabbos is one of the commandments in the Torah. The guy looked at me like I was fell off the wall. He never heard that answer. He always thought, you don't want to keep it, you don't keep it. It's the exact same thing a guy who says, I don't want to learn. Saying that is not called being emes. It's called being a rush. It's called being evil. It's the same thing you tell your father, I'm going to have to be honest with you. I really hate you. And I don't mean to say it, but I got to be honest with you. Who asked you to say it? Who bad thing you bet? You're not allowed to say that. And that's a very big key to understanding how one, one is from. I told this fellow, called me recently, I said, you don't have a choice. You're mechoyev to learn Torah. You think if you go to work, you're part of learning Torah. What Rosh Hashiva is telling you is that if you go to work, you're going to become a shakes. You know why? Because you're going away from Torah as if, you know, you're rejecting Torah. So you don't think when you go to work, you're going to reject it more. Oh, I'm going to learn my Seder. I'll have my Sadarim. I'll learn. I said, you don't like to learn. What short story you like to learn? What, what, what's the story with you? So what, he said, so what do I have to do? I said, you can leave yeshiva, but you have to leave yeshiva once you're a committed Jew. Once you're a person that's loyal to the Torah and you understand what fealty to Torah means, what it means to be loyal and committed to Hashem. And the question you ask yourself is not what I like and what I don't like, but you ask yourself, what is my obligation as a Jew? So what happens, you see, you see another guy who just becoming from, or he became from later in life and he learns one hour a day and he works all day long. You say, I wanna be like that. That guy's not a Russian because that guy is moving in the right direction. You are going in the opposite direction. I remember reading a shidduch to a girl who was very modern. She didn't matter. And the boy, I didn't read the shidduch, it was a Bible shidduch. And the boy was becoming from. And the girl said to me, this is the perfect shidduch I'm dreaming of. It's not that from, but he does go to davening, he does the minimal things, what's not filling. I told him, my dear young lady, this is not your mate. It can't be your mate. You know why? He's going in the opposite direction of you. You just happen to meet him at that point where you see eye to eye of things. He doesn't discover Yiddishkeit yet, but he will discover Yiddishkeit. And he's going to go up the mountain. And you're going to be dragged backwards up the mountain. So you either decide you want to turn around and go up the mountain with him, start from where you are and go up the mountain, or drop it and run. She chose to climb the mountain. She turned around, climbed the mountain with him. Now that's a person that has to understand that. Just because a person doesn't like Yiddish, you ask all these guys who are off the derrick, you know what they'll tell you? Well, it, it doesn't do anything for me. Or Davin, I ask a lot of people this. Oh, Davin, Davin doesn't speak to me. So therefore, I don't, so what? I told the guy, imagine I went and I punched you in the face. I said, you know, right now I want to stretch my hands and my enjoyment is for punching you in the face. I'm watching you grimace and maybe get some blood coming out of your nose. It's even more, and like if I loosen a tooth, <laughs> that's probably like, that made my day. <laughs> maybe a week here then. Does that mean anything? No. So why do you think you do that to Hashem? What gives you the right to do that? You don't even say to a guy, I want to punch you in the face. I'd love to poke your eyes out. This is the key to, so you say, I don't want to be a hypocrite. Hashem wants you to be a hypocrite. Now, the fact of the matter is, I said, I said, this is what I tell people. You have to learn and understand why you don't enjoy learning. There are many people, if you're Jewish, I tell them, and your mother was Jewish, and you're sure your mother is Jewish, then you could enjoy Torah. 
and some level. This, some people's mind work lumdis, they enjoy lumdis. Some people's mind work more simplistic, so they need a simplistic mathematical, just a, some people need more simplistic, but I said, if you're not enjoying it, it's for one reason. You know why? Because you don't think you have to do it. You don't want to be kind of this. And you're not allowing yourself to enjoy it. I remember when my mother tried to feed me, uh, what it was, green beans maybe. Not spinach, but I don't think it was spinach. We had spinach in the house. But I remember it was green beans. And I remember them forcing me. My father tried to t- try and eat it. We have such an action. And I remember putting it in my mouth. And I remember putting my mouth, also, bleh, you know what I mean? And I was so happy. <laughs> because it's like I proved it. I proved it. It's not for me. And one day I got a little brains. I said, this is good stuff. I started eating it. <laughs> I wasn't pushed. I decided my own. When somebody else was pushing me, I said, I don't want it. This is the same thing with Yiddish game. It's the same thing from Torah. It's the same thing from the Siyanis. People call me up and say, I'm going through this challenge. How do I get rid of it? I said, you don't. That's the wrong question. What you need to ask me is, how do I deal with this challenge? How do I accept this challenge? How do I get over this challenge? That's what you can ask. I said, ask me, how do I get to enjoy learning? There's a fellow who tells, came to tell me years ago, he's sick and tired of learning, doesn't know nothing. He's learning, I said, what Masech are you learning now? He's learning Masech to Sukh. I said, what daf are you holding? He wasn't sure. He wasn't sure. I said, okay, that happens. I said, what Sukh are you learning in Sukh? He also didn't remember. I said, do you go to Yeshiva on a daily basis? He says, yes. So you're not sure, but you know the name. That's good. You know the name at least. I said, but what was his complaint? His complaint was that I've been learning sukkah for a few months now and I have no idea how to build a sukkah. So I really, I really can't say this stuff. I said, first of all, your first premise is that you didn't learn sukkah. You don't learn the sukkahs that you're learning to learn how to build a sukkah. If you want to know how to build a sukkah, you go into a Jewish, Jewish supermarket and you look by the checkout line, they have a little pocket handbook. How to build sukkah in 10 easy steps in 10 ways. You pay yourself two ninety five for those little booklets. Some guy drew pictures. And you go home, you build yourself a sukkah. I said, well, you want to learn, you learn halacha. What do you, what do you, I don't understand you. It's, that's why you learn the sukkah for to understand the concepts of sukkah. A person has to understand that when you're learning Torah, you have to accept it. There's no running from Torah. Just like there's no running from Shabbos. And there's no running from Tefillin. And there's no running from, and this is the the, the, the urita of our generation, is that everybody says, if I don't like something, I'm entitled to reject it. I don't care if it's a mitzvah, if it's a chiyuv, I don't care. Now, there are in a person's lifetime, you may sinner and you may have. There are days like that. Have you ever experienced days like this? Hello? Probably. Probably. Not all the time, hope. Um, people have your mass say, no. I mean, some days you wake up and the Yitzhara tells you, eh, I'm not interested. That's not a pre kisoyan The Rebbe Tom says there is such an Yitzhara in life of Yemeya Sinna. And there are days of Yemeya Av. The problem is, how do you deal with Yemeya Sinna? So there's one guy that says, I like the Yemeya Sinna because now I have an excuse why not to learn. I have an excuse why not to wake up in the morning and dive because I hate it. No, that's a challenge, my friend. It's a challenge of Yemeya Sinna. That's a try acknowledge it. There's nobody in the world that doesn't have Yemeya Av on Yemeya Sinna. Every single person in the world has it. Some more and some less. But every has it may sin a towards something. And the Yitzhar doesn't let us go. The answer is, I acknowledge what it is. Right now I'm a little challenged. So you have to know, if a person, sometimes you're learning, and you're not enjoying the learning. It could be simply, you're tired. It could be simply, like I told 
uh, another guy. I was, I was talking to this guy, so I saw he was a Tutsach kind of guy. So I said to him, let me ask you a question. What are you into besides learning? Said, no, no, nothing much. I said, listen, are you kind of guy that into sports? Are you one of these secret Lakewood sports lovers, sports alcoholics? Because there's lots of them hanging around. Uh, many people told me, yes. <laughs> I said, where well, are you going to grow up? Oh, it's not so bad. I said, I, said, you, I said, that's what's keeping you away from learning. Because you're so far kai, for this Irish guy, of watching adults running around in pajamas with cloth little balls, and your mom is you're so, you're so, you're so, you're so, it's so Irish, that's what keeps a person much of a cool. There's another thing people get, think, people get far kai from news. News, whether it's Twitter news, whether it's just these news, these news things, from whatever it is, they, it's, a, it's, a, it's an obsession. They wake up, they call the news. Breakfast, they call the news. Middle of the learning, they call the news. I said, if they're doing that for three, four days, you should notice that there's no new news. <laughs> Things don't happen that often. It's the Chazor, Chazor Shashir. So you listen over to Nachamo, maybe you miss something, maybe the first time you weren't Machavin so well, you listen over again, and you come home, you do it again by lunch, and then again in the middle of Seder by afternoon, and then by supper time, and before you go to sleep. So a guy recently told me, you know, you're pretty good. <laughs> he said, is it that bad? He said, I only listen to Kol Mavasar. <laughs> I said, if it's an obsession, and it's getting you, you're not looking for news, understand what you're doing. You're looking for a way to get away from Yiddish game. If you tell me you want to learn Yiddish, so you want to know how to say president-elect, so I understand. You want to know how to say shakt in Yiddish, shakirt. <laughs> there has been months of hearing the same word, shakirt, shakirt. I don't know what shakirt meant, but I figured I'd be shakt. Or the president of Welt. I felt the president. <laughs> He's becoming a president. That's called president the like. <laughs> and things like that. Okay, you want to study languages. People like that. We had it once had a time they like, like to study languages. <clears throat> but uh, people like that. But we're talking here about people who are, get obsessed. People get involved in other things and that preoccupies their mind. They don't know how to compartmentalize. And therefore, a person has to understand. In those areas, you have to be a hypocrite. You don't express it. You don't express negativity. Now, you can go and ask, I'm feeling Yimea Sinna, how do I deal with Yimea Sinna? That's a very valid question. How do you understand the Yimea Sinna? Let's say a guy has Yimea Sinna for a long time. He has to figure out that he caused the Yimea Sinna. Is he the reason for the Yimea Sinna? Or is it just because he has other interests that's not pulling him away? What's pulling him away? Here's a guy that decides not happy with his wife. Now, a lot of times, many people have called me over the years, and I say, what's the real reason you're not happy? You know what a lot of times it is? The guy's eyes became wandering eyes. And the guy decides that everybody on the block, or all his friends, have much nicer and much prettier wives than he has. That's what happens. Many people decide that their friends have much better parents than they do. So they decide, my parents are no good. That's what people are. And it's, it's not coming from the right place. You need to understand what's, what's the gairim of the sinner here. You need to deal with the sinner. But you can never accept sinner or it doesn't do it for me as an excuse to be pyrrhic to throw off from yourself a yoke and an obligation that you have. It's a pity if you do the mitzvahs, which are obligate commandments, and you do them without joy or without trying to enjoy them. If you learn in a way that's going to guarantee that your learning won't be joyful, because you don't review anything, you never get clarity in anything. Every time they ask people, call me up, they don't like learning, I said, you have to get anything clear. Could you tell me one sugya, shak levitaria clear, with some shitas? No, I have no idea. I said, I knew it. How do you know it? Because if you would do that, you would enjoy learning. Even if you would be 50 years old, and you're learning, you're working, and you're learning, but you want to enjoy the learning, that's what you want to do. You want to enjoy your learning. 
you don't enjoy your learning, you don't stay the chance. Problem that happens more when a person who needs lumbus, and that person doesn't have the time to explore the depths of the sugya that much. So he says, What's, what am I supposed to do? That's where the challenge becomes more productive. There's different ways of dealing with that. And therefore, our Kaddish Baruch Hu should help us to be the proper hypocrites, to know when being honest is wrong, being honest is a sheker, being honest is not what our Kaddish Baruch Hu wants from you, and you're supposed to be dishonest. When it comes to saying about Torah, you're supposed to say, I know that Torah is Keneged Kula. And I would like to enjoy that Torah, Keneged Kula. The Harif, no, I would like to enjoy it. It's not, I don't like it, and I don't want to like it. Or I don't want the challenges. Or I don't want Yiddishkeit. Or I don't want this, and I don't want that. That's not up to you. B. A hypocrite. Anything Hashem tells you to do, you could enjoy it. 